Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you are doing awesome. I am still learning about my computer, but I really, really like it. It is smaller than my other computer. And uh, it doesn't have some of the features that my other computer has, but it's okay. I think it'll be good for what I need it for. It runs my fan. It charges my phone, which I probably need to put on the charger real quick because I don't know where my. I don't know. Uh -oh. oh, sorry. Sorry about that. When I plugged it in, it shut it off. Okay, well, tonight we are going to talk about Psalms 4. And uh, I think First John 1, I read that this morning with my daily reading, and I thought, wow, this is so good. All of the Bible is good. So we're just diving into Psalms. That's what we're doing, I guess, until we get through the 150th Psalm, which I guess that'd be 150 days. Um, they'll probably get us past this year. I don't know. Anyway. Hope you had an awesome Sunday today. I hope you got to go and worship with your church family. Um, I was talking to Josie while I go on the phone, and I said, ooh, we're going to get together, and you're going to get to see my face, but I don't get to see your face. <laughs> so anyway, it is all good. Well, let's dive into some prayer right now, and then we will delve into Psalms 4. And I am not going to be on here. I'm going to start shorting, shortening my videos to about 30 minutes. I think 30 minutes or a little over 30 minutes is a good length of time. I know I watch a lot of videos on YouTube. And if something comes up that's an hour, two hours, unless I have something that I can do and listen at the same time, I am very, very rarely going to sit and watch something for over an hour. So I'm going to try to keep these shorter. That way, maybe more people will come on and watch. But anyway, it is all for God's glory. Anyway, all right, so let's pray. God, we just come to you and we just want to praise you, God. We know that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. We know that there is absolutely nothing that is happening right this second that you do not know about, God. We know that you are sovereign over all. You are our everlasting Father. You are our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. You are our shelter in the storm. And you are our strength and refuge, God. God, there is no God like you. There is nothing too hard for you. You are miraculous and powerful and mighty. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. You are a kind, loving, compassionate, caring, and you are patient, God. You want none to suffer. You want none to perish, God. You want all to come to the saving grace and salvation through Jesus. Thank you for loving us, God. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And I just want to lift up the medical professional professionals to you, God, because many are getting stuck um, saying that if they do not take this vaccine, that their jobs will be terminated, God. I just pray for peace for them and for a time that they can decide what they want to do with their life. If they want to continue the path that they're on, knowing that in their job, in their field, that this vaccine is mandated, many do not want to take it for their own personal reasons. And I really believe that this vaccine should be a choice. They don't mandate the flu vaccine. They don't mandate the pneumonia vaccine. Only this one is mandated. And so God, I just pray that you would give these peace and that you would help them. You would give them strength 
and that you would help them to do their job every day. I know the hospitals are overrun, the clinics are overrun, the ERs are overrun, God. Just pray for all these people that you would heal their bodies, God, that they would feel your presence in their healing, that you would send people to minister to them that would be the hands and feet of Jesus while they're sick, God, that they would know that they have miraculously been healed by you. And God, we pray for our law enforcement. We just pray, God, that you would be with them, that you would give them strength and you would protect them from this disease. That you would protect the medical workers also from this disease. And God, we pray for our military. We pray that our military, that you would give them strength, that you would give them guidance and wisdom, that you would uh, be with them as they stand for our freedom, as they fight for our freedom, God. We pray for their families, God. We pray for peace as uh, these are on the front line of this disease, God. We also pray for the lost. We pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. We pray that you would give them open hearts, God. We pray for the prodigals, that they would see where they are and that they would return to you, God, that they would repent and that they would have their relationship with you reconciled. We pray for all the disasters, God, all over the world. There are so many in our country right now, this big storm that is uh, close to Rhode Island. I think it's already hit, God. I pray that you would be with those people, that they would feel your presence, that you would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus, send people that would be the love and compassion of Jesus, that their needs would be met, God, in this time of disaster, all the other disasters, all the uprising of the countries, God, that you would be with these people, that you would protect them, that you would help them find safe passage in Afghanistan miraculously, God, that they can share these testimonies for many, many years, knowing that you, God, stood between them and the very people that wanted to kill them. God, we just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. There have been so many. We pray for healing for our friends that we know that are sick. For the ones that are not, we pray for protection, God. We just pray for um, an eradication of this disease, God, because it is a disease. It is a pestilence, just like Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, God. We are seeing pestilences. We are seeing wars and rumors of wars. We are seeing what he was talking about in the end days, God. Just please give us strength and please protect us as we move forward. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my friend Josie. My friend Josie made it. All right, well, let's dive in to Psalms 4. I have my little markers in here now in this study Bible. But I kind of like, I like using this study Bible. I just wish I had a better setup for reading my study Bible because it's heavy. Okay, Psalm 4. And so my heading for Psalm 4 is the safety of the faithful. And it says, To the chief musician with stringed instruments, a psalm of David. So this is another psalm of David. Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long, O you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call to him. So let's just stop there. That's about the middle of it. And so let's just kind of review some of this. That God comes to him when he is in distress. And God does have mercy on him. And he does hear his prayer. But then there are others that um, are his, I guess, his oppressors. 
These are his oppressors, and many times with King David, people were trying to kill him, just like last night. His own son was trying to kill him. And so, um, how long will you love worthlessness and seek falsehood? You know, think about the things that are going on right now and the people that are clinging to lies and clinging to untruths and knowing, knowing full well that it's not true. And um, how long are they going to cling to their falseness? How long are they going to cling to the things of the world? But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. So he has set us apart because we are his children and we are godly. We are not perfect. We will never be perfect like Jesus here on this earth. But we are striving to do what's right and we are striving to walk in the ways of God. Uh, be angry and do not sin. Meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. And um, so again, you know, we are not to be angry and we are not to sin. We're to meditate within our heart on our bed or in our quiet place, or I have a favorite place here in my office where I do my daily quiet time in my prayer. And um, I'll, it's my favorite place in my house. It's just, it has scriptures all over it. I don't know if any of you have seen the movie War Room and her little closet that she had all the scriptures on the walls and everything. Well, I have a much bigger spot. I have scriptures all over, and that's where I do my quiet time. Um, I recommend that, that you pick a place in your house, a very special place where you can meet God every day. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart more than in the season that their grain and wine increased. I will both lie down in peace and sleep. You alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. So today, um, I'm not going to read it, but today the daily reading was Psalm 23. So this kind of reminds me of Psalm 23 about the Lord is my shepherd. You know, he wants us to have peace and he wants us, God wants us to trust him. God doesn't want us to follow after the things of the world because they are just, they're fleeting and they're temporary. The only thing that is going to last forever is eternal life in heaven. Okay, so I'm going to read my study part of Psalm 4. 4. This is five, two. Okay, the poet's faith and trust in God is expressed in his psalm. The sacrifices of righteousness are those offered with the right attitude. The assurance of God's protection comes to those who put their trust in him. And he is the true source of security in an insecure world. So we look around and we see what's going on in the world, but we can trust God. We can trust God with everything that we have. We can trust God with our children. You know, as our children get older, Josie and I were, were talking about earlier, as our children get older, we have to trust God more with them and we have to pray more with more for them. And, you know, I have been through that. I've been through that when my daughter you know, turned 18 and 19 and 20, we just have to, we have to trust God with them and we just have to pray more for them and just pray that God will lead and guide and protect them as they just, you know, as they learn as adults. It's really hard once they get to be adults, we can't make those decisions for them anymore. They have to make their own. And the most important decision that they can make is to follow Jesus, is to be saved. 
So that concludes what I wanted to read for Psalm 4. And then I want to flip over to uh, 1 John 1 and read 1 through 10. There's only 10 verses. But I, I love 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Um, our Sunday school class studied it, and it is so good. And it talks about brotherhood and fellowship and all the good things that we need to be doing in our churches. So what was heard, seen, and touched is what my Bible says. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled, concerning the word of life, the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you, that your joy may be full. And so I want to see. Oh. So it says that the writer did not identify himself in 1 John. Um, hmm. I thought it was John. Okay, thus there is strong evidence that John, the son of Zebedee, and the apostle of Jesus composed this letter. So I think it, it was the John that saw heaven come down, and I think that that's right. And if, if it's not, then put it in the comments, and I'll do some more research on it. Okay, fellowship with him and one another. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So I really I like first, second, and third John. And that's why, because it talks about fellowship and love, fellowship with God, fellowship with, sorry, my back itches, fellowship with Jesus, fellowship with each other, you know, to love one another, to have that fellowship, that kinship. You know, I don't know about y'all, but there are people that I meet and instantly I have a spiritual connection with them. And I know what it is, too, when I meet them. I know it's my spirit. My spirit recognizes their spirit. So does that ever happen to y'all? Because that happens to me. It has happened to me. It doesn't happen to me with everybody. But there are just some people that I meet, and my spirit recognizes their spirit. And there's just a connection. And one of the ladies that I work with with Unbound, I feel that for her. I feel that spiritual connection, that spiritual kingdom, family bond. And I feel it with my church members too. Um, but I've been around them for so long. But when I meet somebody, you know, in person, and I just, bam, I just have that feeling. Do you ever feel that, Josie, with some people? I do. I feel that very strong spiritual connection, and I think that's what this is talking about. That deep fellowship, that deep love, 
through Jesus, because we can't love each other if we don't have Jesus in our hearts. Because as humans, we're just pretty stinky. We can be pretty stinky, you know, towards each other. But with the love of Jesus, that compassion in our hearts and um, the caring for people, the, the wanting good things for people through Jesus, it's, a, it's easy to do that. Without Jesus, it's not. It's not. And God has been showing me very clearly lately that evil has no loyalty. They have no love. They have no peace with each other. They have no joy with each other because they don't have the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And that comes through the Holy Spirit. So if you don't have Jesus, you know, as your Savior, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. So people that are on the evil side, that they are doing evil for evil, they don't have those. They don't have those fruits of the Spirit. So they don't understand the fellowship, the, the kinship, the kingdom family. They don't understand that. That's, you know, something that they don't understand. And I'm seeing that a lot in the world. I'm seeing a lot of hate. I'm seeing a lot of exact opposite from the fruits of the Spirit. I'm seeing hate instead of love. I'm seeing unhappiness instead of joy. I'm seeing dissatisfaction, no peace instead of peace. So you think about you think about the fruits of the Spirit, and you think about the world, and where the world is now. And when you look up, those are in Galatians 5.22. And when you look those up, you think about what's opposite of those. And that's exactly what we see in the world. We see it every day, and they don't know. They don't know. They don't know what it's like to have that peace. Even when you're in the midst of a storm. Even when you're sick, Josie, to have that peace, to have that trust that God is going to make you better. You know, they don't have that. I feel sorry for them. I want them to have it. You know, I have I have my make, oh, I nearly fell. I have my Make Heaven Crowded t-shirt on today. I want to I want to invite everyone in. I don't want to fall over my computer, but I want to invite everyone in. I want to invite everyone in. It's not my heaven. It's it's God's. But I want to invite everyone in. All right. How do we want to do the salvation message? God's simple plan of salvation. Let's do this one. You got something on your phone. You sprayed something on it. Uh, my phone needs to be cleaned off because I let Seth use it the other day. So it's got Seth fingerprints. Okay, so I'm going to read this as if I am actually witnessing to whoever is in front of me. Uh, where did I get my shirt at? From, um, where did I get my shirt at? I'm not sure. Because I buy from two places. I like Love and Faith. I don't know if you've seen it on Facebook or not. I highly recommend Love and Faith. I love their t-shirts. They're very soft. Only buy soft t-shirts now. Um, and I get them for like $10 each, Christian t-shirts. Um, this one, I don't think I got from there. I'm not sure. I have to look at the, the tag and see. There's another company, Eternal Light, that I buy from sometimes. But I, I like Love and Faith. On their package, they, they have, on the back of their package, they have Jesus Loves You. And they ship quickly, and I love their t-shirts. I love the way they fit, and I love the way they feel. They're very soft. But I'm not sure if this one is one of those or not. Okay. So, my friend, I'm asking you the most important question of life, just like what we talked about. Let's make sure that our kids 
as they turn into adults, have made this decision. It is the most important decision of their lives. Your joy and your sorrow for all eternity depends on your answer. The question is, are you saved? It is not a question of how good you are, nor if you are a church member, but are you saved? Are you sure you will go to heaven when you die? You know, we have to just get very, very blunt with people. There are two choices. There are only two choices. And straddling the fence is, is really a choice for the other side. So there's there's Jesus and there is our enemy, Satan. And these are the only two choices. You either choose to go with Jesus or you choose to go with Satan. That's That's the only two choices. There are no more. Okay. Um, God says in order to go to heaven, you must be born again. In John 3, 7, Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. In the Bible, God gives us the plan of how to be born again, which means to be saved. His plan is simple. You can be saved today. Well, you ask how? First, my friend, you must realize you're a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death. For the wages, the payment of sin is death. Romans 6.23 This includes eternal separation from God in hell. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews 9.27 But God loved you so much, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus to bear your sin and die in your place. He hath made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Jesus had to shed his blood and die, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17.11 Without shedding of blood is no remission, no pardon, Hebrews 9.22 God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 Although we cannot understand how, God said, My sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus and he died in our place. He became our substitute. It is true, God cannot lie. My friend, God commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Acts 17.30 This repentance is a change of mind that agrees with God that one is a sinner and also agrees with what Jesus did for us on the cross. In Acts 16.30.31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on him as the one who bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, and whom God resurrected. His resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can claim everlasting life when Jesus is received as Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 1, 12, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13, Whosoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe nor can, but shall be saved. Surely you realize you are a sinner. Right now, wherever you are repenting, lift your heart to God in prayer. In Luke 18, 13, the sinner prayed, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Just pray, O oh God, I know I am a sinner. I believe Jesus was my substitute when he died on the cross. I believe his shed blood, death, burial, and resurrection were for me. I now receive him as my Savior. 
I thank you for the forgiveness of my sins, the gift of salvation, and everlasting life because of your merciful grace. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Just take God at his word and claim his salvation by faith. Believe and you will be saved. No church, no lodge, no good works can save you. Remember, God does the saving, all of it. God's simple plan of salvation is you are a sinner. Therefore, unless you believe on Jesus who died in your place, you will spend eternity in hell. If you believe on him as your crucified, buried, and risen Savior, you receive forgiveness for all of your sins in his gift of eternal salvation by faith. You say, surely it cannot be that simple. Yes, that simple. It is scriptural. It is God's plan. My friend, believe on Jesus and receive him as your Savior today. If his plan is not perfectly clear, read this tract over and over without laying it down until you understand it. Your soul is worth more than all the world. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Mark 8.36 Be sure you are saved. If you lose your soul, you miss heaven and lose all. Please let God save you at this very moment. God's power will save you, keep you saved, and enable you to live a victorious Christian life. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as in, is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to hear to bear it. First Corinthians ten thirteen. Do not trust your feelings; they change. Stand on God's promises; they never change. After you are saved, there are three things to practice daily for spiritual growth. Pray, which is talking to God. Read your Bible, where God talks to you. And witness, uh, you talk for God. You should be baptized in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ as a public testimony of your salvation. And then unite with, Bible, with a Bible-believing church without delay. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. 2 Timothy 1.8 Whosoever therefore shall confess, testify of me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Matthew 10.32 So this is, this is God's simple plan of salvation. And it is from Grace Baptist Church. And I feel like I probably got this when I was going and um, putting out information for the promise. Because otherwise, I don't know where I got it. But anyway, I found it in my car. I found it in my car with some other tracks. And I go, well, this is great. Because I'm always looking for new tracks to share the gospel. So if you did accept Jesus as your Savior tonight, then welcome to the Kingdom Family of God. We talked about Kingdom Family tonight, about that kinship that we feel with each other, that spiritual connection that we get through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And uh, so the angels are rejoicing, and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So this is by far the best decision that you can ever make, <clears throat> excuse me, that you can ever make for your life. Okay, that track right there, it talked about some things that I normally talk about too. So it covered some of the things that I usually talk about after salvation. So let's move on to the blessing of God. So I, I need to get off of here and go feed my child. And go feed me. I haven't had dinner tonight either. I need to go feed me too. Okay, so Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Wow. 
Wow, this whole world needs a lot of you. But you know what? They need Jesus too. This whole world needs Jesus. And that's where the lack of peace is coming from, is that people don't have Jesus. They don't have, like we talked about, the fruits of the Spirit. Which I really wasn't planning on talking about that. But that's where the Holy Spirit took me tonight. I'm going to write that down too. Because I believe that evil is the opposite of the fruits of the Spirit. So every word of the fruits of the Spirit, you can come alongside and you can find an opposite word that defines the evil that we see in our world right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and pray. Do you have any prayer requests, Josie? Do you have some unspoken requests that God knows? We talked about some stuff earlier, but you told me just to pray on my own about that. I'll wait a little while. I've been moving back and forth. Prayers for everyone. Okay. I think I know what that means. I'll pray about those other things um, during my quiet time in the mornings and maybe at night. I pray with Seth every night too. Um, pray about all the missing kids and all the things with human trafficking that bother me. Okay. Let's go ahead and dive into some prayer. God, we just praise you and thank you. I praise you for my sister Josie that is so faithful to come and listen to me. And I just hope and pray, God, that um, through your word that she is learning more. Not that I'm anything. I'm just a willing vessel that's willing to read some scripture. And it's your word that's powerful, not my words. And God, I just lift up Josie to you. I just pray that you would continue to heal her body, God. She is doing so much better, and we thank you for that. But we just pray that you would restore her body to new, that she would be able to go back to work, God. We pray for Austin as he makes decisions in his life, God, that you would give him your guidance and wisdom. And we just pray that you would protect him from this disease. He's been around everybody that has it. God, just keep his immunity strong and keep him not getting it so he can continue to go to school. And we pray for Mr. Mike. We thank you that Mr. Mike is uh, feeling better. And we just praise you that the boys are feeling better. And we just pray, God, that you would continue to give Mr. Mike guidance and wisdom as he raises these boys and as he gives these boys a home that they have never really experienced before God um, let him shine the light of Jesus for them so that when they leave God they have a better path that they can follow God we just pray for um, all of Josie's family her sisters and their family her brothers and their families her children and their families God we just pray that you would be with them, that you would protect them, that you would heal them if they're sick, and that you would provide for them and that you would bless them, God. We just pray for guidance and wisdom from the Holy Spirit, God, that they would boldly proclaim the name of Jesus everywhere they go. And God, I pray the same for my family. I just pray for that protection, that provision, those blessings, the guidance from the Holy Spirit, God. We just pray that you would just help us to go out in boldness, to share your truths, to stand for the truths against all the many lies that we see and that we hear. God, that you would give us discernment from the Holy Spirit to be able to tell what is truth and what is not truth. And that, God, you would help us to boldly go out there and share the gospel of Jesus, that there would be a Jesus movement in our country that there would be a Jesus movement all over the world, God, that cannot be stopped. A great awakening, a great spiritual awakening, the one that we've been hearing about for years, God. We just pray that the lost would have their eyes open and their hearts open and their ears open to the truth, God. And that 
the Holy Spirit would draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. We just want to bless anyone that comes here and listens to your word, not really listens to me, but listens to your word, God, and takes it into their heart. We want to bless them and their families abundantly, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Did I miss anybody? I think the other things you told me to pray about, I was supposed to pray about on my own. So I'm writing them down so I don't forget. Also, God, I thank you that my daughter is doing better. And I just pray that you continue to heal her body too. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Well, I am going to have to get off of here and feed myself. <laughs> I'm hungry. I just realized that I'm hungry. Um, I would tell you a funny story about earlier, but I need to get off of here. Maybe tomorrow I'll tell you my funny story about Dollar General and my car and everything. All right. Well, my friends, my Pray In Share Warriors and my brothers and sisters in Christ, Kingdom Family, have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow and much love and cyber hugs until I see you again. God bless you too, Josie. I love you too. Good night.